It's good to be here. Damn, I haven't been on a class on a Sabbath in a minute, so it's good to be back on. Do we t I guess you can know where I'm at. You can see where I'm at. Bishop, we are honored to have you back, Bishop. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hey, definitely want to say shalom, most high in Christ, bless bishops, deacons, captains, officers, soldiers, brothers, sisters, family. All praises. We made it to another Sabbath, y'all. And as Bishop will say for all frenemies online, all right, well, take your pens and paper out. Maybe you can get some scriptures and be edified. So today's class was entitled um, Filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, I was asking a question to brothers uh, concerning it and asking them, can they explain it? And for the most part, they got it, but there was a couple of things I was a little surprised that uh, I think need some clarification or some edification. So hopefully by the will of the Most High and the Holy Spirit's upon us that we can convey this message to you all and you all can get a better understanding of it. And what is the Holy Spirit and how it works and you damn sure don't want to lose it. I can tell you that much. Um, so I'm asking brothers, who can explain to me? Oh, let me say, last night I was with some of the brothers here and some very good precepts on it, very good precepts. Some stuff I used, a lot of it I didn't use just because I went in a different direction with it, but uh, this Bible is vast. I know this is a class that's been taught many times before by many teachers, but hopefully the Lord didn't endow me to give you some understanding. So I, my question to you again is, who can explain what is the Holy Spirit? I want it in one word. Whoever raises their hand, whoever, is there a mic out there? Yes, whoever you hand it to, that's the person who answers it. So you choose. State your name and who you are. Yoel Israel. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy, and then you got the law. Oh, good. Anybody else? Shalom, leadership. Uh, Soldier Kish. Uh, wisdom is, uh, the Holy Spirit is wisdom. One more person. It's instruction. Instruction. Okay. Good. Here's right behind you. Good. He wants. He wants. That's good. I'm gonna say power. Power. I like that too. I like power. Uh, can I tell you something? None of your answers are wrong. The Bible, and being endowed with the Holy Spirit, encompasses the whole Bible. Everything in this Bible that we're inspired of God concerning the laws of God is the Holy Spirit. All right? But we're going to go with a scripture that's uh, common, that's used very often in the churches. We're going to start with 1 John, uh, 5, uh, 1 John 5. And uh, to my left of me, I got Deacon Isaac from Dallas. He's in town. Son, Christ bless. Woo! Damn. 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 Bishop, Bishop, I think this is Deacon Isaac's first time in Oklahoma Not City. You know, we don't ever see him. You're joking. You know, he's. I can see why you didn't clap for him. Yeah, he's. <laughs> he's only here a couple hours up the road. He don't come. Couple hours up the up the street. Yes, yeah, because Deacon never he he don't invite me here, man. Oh, here we go. I'm banned from OKC. Uh, give me a first John uh, five. The book of First uh, John five. Give okay. me verse number six. I'm not like looking. Check. Just good. Two. Who's reading for me? Right here, Bishop. Verse 6. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood. Okay, who's reading? Oh, you got Turn up his mic a little bit, please. Turn up to read his mic. Go ahead. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, mm -hmm. even Jesus Christ. Really? Not, by, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. Okay, read up. Verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay, so let's go back. Let's, let's try to unpack this a little bit. Uh, what first we started with, five? Verse six. Verse six. For this is he that came by water and blood. Make it very simple. Who is the he? Very good. 
We're going to take this real slow. Like right now, we're going to take this real slow just to go through it. This is he that came by water and blood. Who wants to give a shot? So Christ came by water and blood. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 7, uh, where he's compacted by blood. Okay, but about the water. The this, wa this is he that came by water and blood. Okay, watch this. Stay right there. Don't get, stay with the mic. Yes, sir. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by, wa by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. So he came by water and blood. Go to Wisdom of Solomon, because that's what you quoted, right? Yes, sir. Seven, what verse is that? Like two? Verse two. Yeah. Verse one. Oh, two. No, you're not going to read it. The reader's going to read it. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven and verse two. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months, being compacted in blood mm -hmm. of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. Is there more you want to read behind it? No, sir. Okay, so that's blood. Where's the water part? He came by water and blood. Anybody else? Uh, Gabar. And Gabar, you was complicit with Abia with that stuff. I tell you, something's wrong to you guys. So of leadership. People online don't know what I'm talking about, but OKC is different, man. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Ephesians 5.26. Very good. Let's go to Ephesians 5.26. So when it said he came by water and blood, Christ came to us in word form, which is the book you're holding on to. He says, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. And then he came in the fleshly form also. We saw him on earth as a man. So let's read that. Ephesians 5.26. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. He came by the washing of water by the word. Give me um, uh, John, what's the first? I mean, St. John's 1. He said, I'm the word made flesh. 1 and 2, I think it is. I'm not there with you. 1 and what? 1 and 14. Let me go. Okay, that's it. The book of John, chapter 1 and verse 14. Let me, get, let me catch up with you guys. 1, 14. Go ahead. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. I want you to remember that last part, full of grace and truth. So the word, or I should say, and he, back in the first John 5, this is he that came by water and blood. Now, the reason why I'm going to read like this for is because as we read on down, it's going to help explain why we are to believe in him and how you obtain the Holy Ghost. So, so this is he that came by water, the word, in the flesh, in blood, right? The word was made flesh. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. So not by the word only, but he came in a physical form. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. So what is the spirit that beareth witness that he came in water and blood? Azariah? Shalom, leadership, most high Christ blessed. The spirit that beareth witness that he came in the flesh was the Bible. All right. So where would you go to, you got, where would you go to in the Bible that bear witness that the Messiah was going to come in the flesh. Uh, I'd go to 2 Samuel 7, verse uh, 12. Okay, give me another one. Something else. Give me some. Oh, yeah, you could use that. Yes, all right, yeah. Something else. Another one. That, okay, that's good. You could use that one. That was with Nathan, right? Nathan the prophet, when he talked about the Messiah coming. Right, okay. Give me another one. That bear, there's a bear witness. This, the Bible bears witness that he was going to come in the flesh. Get yeah, right there. Shalom, leadership. <clears throat> Brother Karel from Dallas. Um, you can read about it in Isaiah chapter seven and Isaiah chapter nine. Okay, Isaiah chapter seven. Right. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah seven. I'm trying to remember which one was that in nine. How does this work? Let's go. Isaiah nine. 
I mean, Isaiah 7, I'm sorry. Was it 7 and what? 14. Let's go. The book of Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Right, so this was the prophecy. Well, this was twofold. This was literally talking then also, but the prophetic was the coming of the Messiah, that a virgin is going to bring forth a son. You know what? We're going to touch upon the virgin birth because that does go into the Holy Ghost too. Okay, good. So there's many scriptures. Isaiah 53 is one. Uh, somebody quoted Isaiah 11 was another one. Psalms 111, ver Psalm 110 and 1. And one. Uh, Deuteronomy, I always get this wrong. 16, 16? 18, 18. 18. I always get that one wrong. Yeah, Gabar. Could we use Acts 13, 22 I, I want, to 23? I want, I want an Old Testament. I want an Old Testament because at this uh, time the New Testament wasn't written. Deuteronomy 18, 18? Yeah, that's right. We just said that. That's good. Right. So let's go back. Verse 6 one more time. The book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Mm -hmm. and, it is, and it is the spirit that beareth witness. And it is the spirit that <coughs> beareth witness, right? Which is the Bible. We don't. Because the spirit is truth. Because the spirit, the Bible, is truth. And the truth is what? This is elementary stuff we're talking about right now. What is the truth? Who's, explain? Who's going to explain the truth? Go ahead. Uh, the truth is the word of God. The real, commandments. What scripture are you going to give me? Psalms 119, uh, 142. Let's go to it real quick. The book of Psalms chapter 119 and verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. And I what? And thy law is the truth. 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 Christ said, I am the word made flesh. So, you know, I always find that perplex me with Christianity because I don't understand how you can believe in Christ and not keep the law. Or how can you keep the law and not believe in Christ? They're one and the same. It, it, you can't separate Christ from the commandments. Everybody understand that? Sure. So let's go back and read on. Verse 7, the book of 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Now it says there's three that bear record in heaven. Record of what? They bear record of what? They bear record of Christ. Right, very good. They bear record of Christ. Three in heaven. Read on. And there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now it says the three that bear record in heaven is the Father, that bear record in heaven. The Word bears record in heaven, and the Holy Ghost will bear record. All right. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 5. Let's deal with the Father first. Five and two. Ecclesiastes five and two. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter five and verse two. <clears throat> be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven. For God is where? For God is in heaven. Read. And thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. So we know he said it's three that bears record in heaven. God is in heaven. Now where do we read about God bearing witness of his son, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ? There's many scriptures. Somebody just give me one. Let me hear it. What you got? They use the mic. Matthew 17, 1. Let me hear it. Through 3. The book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse you 1. Said, you said 7? Matthew 17, verse seven. 1. Yeah, 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And, and, he, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was, was white as the light. Jump to five. Verse five. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son. And whom I am well pleased. 
Hear ye him. All right. That's God being record. Very good scripture. That's God being record in heaven. That this is his son. So let's go back. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The father, the word, the word. What is the word? What is the word? Give me a scripture. I, I know, okay. The word made flesh. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. Psalms 111. I mean, Psalms 119. Verse 89. The book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 8. I will keep thy statutes. O forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? That's Psalms 119, 189. Verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness. I'm, I'm sorry, read again. The book of Psalm, chapter 119, and verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy word is where? Is settled in heaven. It's settled in heaven. So go uh, link that with Hebrews 10 and 7. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. So he says I come in the volume of the book is written of me. So we read that the word in heaven also testified of him. And now the last one. And the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost in heaven. Testified of him. John 14, 26. Let me hear it. The book of John, chapter 14, and verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back to that one. I wasn't thinking about to using it that way, but okay, good. Another one? Anybody else? Give it my turn to the young man. So leadership, uh, Acts 7 and 55. That's not from heaven. Go to Luke 3. Luke 3. Bear with me. Oh, Luke uh, 322. The book of Luke chapter 3 and verse 22. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. I could use that for the other one too. He says, so this Holy Spirit descended from heaven. We're going to identify what that is in a minute. First Peters 1 and 12. Book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you. With the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So it says, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have by I'm sorry by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. So the apostles preached this gospel by the Spirit of Most High and the Holy Ghost is on them that was sent down from heaven. We're going to come back to this because this is going to help explain. What does the Holy Ghost do? How does it work? How does it move upon people and make them do the things they do? And without it, you're going to make mistakes. All right, Wisdom of Solomon 9. Verse 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9 and verse... Start with... Uh, no, let me look real quick. Uh, verse 17. Verse 17. And thy counsel who hath known, except thou give wisdom, and send thine Holy Spirit from above. The for, the, read on. Verse 18. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. So notice this. I want you to try to see if you can put this together. And thy counsel, who hath known, except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. So why does the Holy Spirit? They're saying, wisdom. But watch what it says. Here's the point behind it. Verse 18, read it. Verse 18. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. Wait a second. So those that lived on the earth, they were reformed by wisdom. That means that Holy Spirit was put upon them. I want to say something to you all so you can understand it. Each and every one of us in here has a dispensation of the Holy Spirit on us. Now what you do with it is something else. But God has imparted upon all of us, that's why we're here. Because we're doing what? We're being reformed right now. Now you can squander away and lose it, or you can let that spirit grow in you, and you do mighty works with this. The question is, once you get it, what you do with it. That's the point. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. So if you understand, that means you have what? Okay, and then you have the what? So let's read it again. Verse 18. Verse 18. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. Right. You were saved. You learned what were the things were pleasing unto God. God decided to give you wisdom, the Holy Spirit, so you learn how to please him. With wisdom come knowledge and understanding. And when you couple that together and you know how to use it, now you know how to navigate in this world. How to avoid pitfalls. Watch this. Go from that to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. We're going to go back one chapter. And I want verse... Start with verse 22. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 22. For wisdom, which is the work of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit, holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the thing that is good, quick, which cannot be let it, ready to do good. Watch this. For wisdom which is the worker of all things. Wisdom is the worker of all things. Who can kind of color that in for me? Nobody. Okay, watch, I'll make it simple. It's the worker of everything. Wisdom. Who can explain it? It was by wisdom that the world was created, or everything was created. Right. Color that picture in. You're right. Color it in now. Give me a little more. Give me some examples, is what I mean. You talking to me? You want some examples from me? I'm talking, to, I'm talking to Joe Biden. You don't want the mic. Well, all right. It was <laughs> wisdom. You talking to me, right? It was wisdom that said that the waves could only go so far. That, there you go. That's, that's wisdom. That's the Holy Spirit moving on the earth. The waves have its place. It can't go any further unless God decides for it to move someplace. Give me some else. Give me another example. Uh, the rotation around the sun, uh, how the sun rotates around the earth. Very good. Very good. It's moving. Wisdom or the Holy Spirit moves that. Watch what we read. I'm going to jump on down. We'll come right back up. Jump on down to verse 25. Yes, sir. Verse 25. For she is the breath of the power of God. For she is the breath of the power.
power of God. Now, we saw my wisdom, right? Can somebody respond to me? Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I hate to talk and feel like I'm just talking to myself. For she is the breath and power of God. Read on. And a pure influence. And what? And a pure influence. And a pure influence. Flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Mo the most high God, his influence is on every. Like you said, the wave, his influence, I don't want it to go any further. This time and next time I want to flood out the whole city in Bali. And he decides he wants to move. His wisdom, that Holy Spirit, is a pure influence in moving everything. Like you said about the rotation of stars, about us being woken up. How was that? It wasn't because we was looking for God. It wasn't because we was right. It was God put his spirit upon us and decided to wake us up. He gave us a dispensation of that Holy Spirit. And now is what we do with it. So finish that. We're going to jump back up. Finish that verse. Verse 25. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. So nothing defiled can fall into her if it's the pure influence of God. So we're fully pure influence to God. And our whole life is that there's no defiled thing can enter into us. It's impossible. Bishop. Yep. Check, check. You mind if I pull a scripture real quick? Did you have Proverbs too? It doesn't matter. Give me Proverbs, the second chapter. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 10 to understand the heaviness of what Bishop is saying right now. What happens when wisdom enters? Proverbs 2 and verse 10, please. The book of Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 10. This is what happened to each and every one of you, one of us. Come on. When wisdom enter, entereth into thine heart. When wisdom enters into your heart. When you come to the understanding of who you are and you accept this Bible as it is written. And wisdom enters in unto you. Come on. And knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. And knowledge, because remember the scripture tells you whenever you accept his, his counsel, he's going to open up his spirit unto you. Y'all know what I'm talking about in Proverbs 1? When you've done that now, it says knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Read. Verse 11. Read. Discretion shall preserve thee. And guess what's going to happen? What, do you, what, what attribute are you now going to obtain? Mm -hmm. Discretion. Discretion shall preserve thee. Discretion is what keep you from doing dumb stuff in the world. Discretion is what's going to tell you, you know what? Yeah, I know what my flaws is. I probably don't need to hang around with, with my old friends back there in the world. Or I probably shouldn't be doing this over here. Or I probably shouldn't be speaking to so-and-so. Or I shouldn't be on my laptop after you know, 12 o'clock in the morning. Read. Understanding shall keep thee. And understanding shall keep thee. This is what happens when wisdom enters in. Discretion now sets in, and you're able to discern what's good for you and what's not, or what's good for someone else and what's not. You can share that wisdom now. That's all, Bishop. Very good, very good. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 7, go back to verse, uh, where did we start at, 22? Yes, sir. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 22. For wisdom, which is the work of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit, holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the thing that is good. Now watch this, read on. Quick, which cannot be let it, ready to do good. Watch this. For wisdom, which is the work of all things, taught me. He said wisdom taught him, for in her is an understanding spirit. So if you're confused and don't understand this Bible, evidently the Holy Spirit's not on you. It makes you say, wait a second, okay, we just read that, and he's saying that you don't have to keep the Sabbath, or you, you don't have to forgive, or whatever you might pick. Automatically, what it hit me is like, is God taking that spirit from him? If we all, we all believe in the Bible, right? Yes, Everybody here believes the Bible, right? Yes, okay, so then why could we ever be confused in the Bible? If we're talking about the Bible, and both of us say we believe the Bible, how could there ever be confusion? 
If there's confusion, there's what? Every evil work. Because God, remember it says, did it say pure right here? Where it says pure? Uh, verse 25. It's a pure influence, right? Hold that. Go to James, whatever that was. Um, James 3. I forgot the verse, but it's going to say, this wisdom from above is first pure. 20-something, I think it is. I don't know if it's 15. 15. I don't even know 20 verse verses there. Get them for me. Verse 15. Psalm 15. The book of James chapter 3 and verse 15. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthy, sensual, devilish. So whatever it was you talking about is earthy, sensual, devilish. Read on. For envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So you already know if there's envy and strife and or confusion, then you know it's not from above. Right? Read on. But the wisdom that is from above but is... But the wisdom from above would be what? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Is first pure. It's pure. We just read it's a pure influence over there in Sirach. Or wisdom of Solomon. Read on. Then peaceable. Then it's peaceable. It said it's pure, first pure, then peaceable. Gentle and easy to be entreated. And it's easy to understand. It's easy to understand. It's not hard. So that's my first red flag is when I'm talking, I see people going back and forth. I'm like, either one or both of them or don't have the Holy Spirit on it or they're losing it because they're starting to malfunction. They don't realize that this, okay, there's a problem. Okay, I'm not saying problems don't arise, but it, I always, the first thing I do, I sit back, I look, I'm like, okay, they can't come to a conclusion. Who's going to be the peacemaker? Who's going to be the one that's going to endeavor to keep the unity? Who's going to, who's going to stop the argument? And if I see nobody doing it, I'm like, uh oh, leaving them people alone. <laughs> I'm not messing with you. Because evidently you're not being moved because this wisdom is a pure influence. It would influence you to stop. It would tell you this doesn't work. What does forcible words reprove? You would know there's no good in this. So if you're still going on, I'm like, okay, that person does not have the Holy Spirit. All right, so. I warn you once and twice, but the third time, I just leave you alone. I don't talk. I leave you alone. Let you malfunction on your own. Because evidently, if, if, you, if God can't fix you, I can't fix you because he's the one who gave it to you. No, no, I don't have no special scripture. You know, I'll read to him again. Not me. I leave. I, those days are over for me. I look you. I always watch you. Either you're going to let the word of God influence you or you're going to do what you're doing and be self-willed and think you got the plan. Man, I'm going to go back to Sirach 34. You have a plan, and you're going to see how it works out for you. Let's go back. Uh, I just want to get, get to verse 22. So wisdom of Solomon 722. Verse 22. For wisdom, which is the work of all things, taught me. It taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit. It's an understanding spirit. Read on. Holy. It's holy, true. One only. There's only one. Manifold. No, no, no. no. There's only one wisdom. There's only one way. It's not multiple ways. Very simple. As it is written. That's it. Nothing else. No add or take from it. If it says it, that's what it is. Well, can I work uh, on the Sabbath? The Bible says no. But you do it. It says no for you. The Bible says no. That's just the answer. But what about it says no? Read on. One only. Manifold. It's manifold. What does the word manifold mean? Who knows? Right there. I see you're the only one that came to the Sabbath today. Everybody else didn't come to. Nobody's there. The only one showed up. <coughs> Man, many fold. Man, oh, there we go. Many fold. It, wisdom is multifaceted. When you think you understand this Bible, you're just scratching the surface. To this day, I'm still learning. You'll learn forever. How to operate with God's wisdom. It's manifold, manifold. Give me um, uh, what is Solomon 7, does 22. Uh, what's the precept I wrote for that? Oh, uh, Psalm 104. 24, verse 24. Psalm 104. 24. The book of Psalm, chapter 104, and verse 24. O Lord, 
How manifold are thy works, and wisdom hast thou made them all. And wisdom hast thou made them all. And wisdom hast thou made them all. Read on. The earth is full of thy riches. It says what? The earth is full of thy riches. The earth is full of God's riches, all his creations, everything he put out. The earth is full of it. It's made by his wisdom. Read on. Verse 25. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. Mm -hmm. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. This is one of his creations, his manifold creations. It says the Holy, I mean the, the wisdom of the Holy Ghost made this. Read on. Verse 27. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou mightest give them their meat in due season. So every animal on this earth, everything created on this earth, God's wisdom is in there. So when that Leviathan swims, and wherever he's at, God will make sure there's a fish or a creature to pass it so it can eat. It'll make sure that you'll get the things that's sufficient for you. How much more of us, when not only we're made by his wisdom, he imparted his wisdom on us. All the other creatures does not have God's wisdom in them, at least to understand a bit of it. We're the only creation that can understand and on some level conceptualize what it means to have the Holy Spirit. No other creation, no other animal, even though they're created with his wisdom, they cannot digest it. No other human being can digest it but us. That makes us special, unique. So how do you let it go? When you understand what the will of God is, have we yet allowed the Holy Spirit to work in us, to do mighty things? Have we exhausted it yet? No. How do I know? We're still here. <laughs> Once we do it, we're getting up out of here. The Holy Spirit will let you know that. It will make it clear. And that's why you see, and again I'm saying, that's why you see, well I'm saying what I see. I see some great works from some of these men in this body. I'm talking, I'm like, okay, the Spirit is working with them. And it's, uh, you, you can hear it in their conversation. You hear it in their classes. You see it in their works. Undeniable. 150 days of camp straight. Okay, that's not by accident, buddy. God is moving you. Who the hell's going to get up 150 days and do the same thing every day? But God on you. On top of going to work and whatever else you got in your life, God is moving you. So let's read on. What verse was that? Uh, verse 27, we have verse 28. Go. Verse 28. That thou givest them, them they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. God imparts it upon them. He opens his hand, they're filled with his goods. Those are his riches. Read on. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die. And return to their dust. And he says, and when you take away your breath, they die. And they return to the dust. When you withhold, you pull it back. So when you die, what is it called? It, huh? When you die, what's it called? What, no, we have a... It's, okay, I, I wouldn't call it a slang word, but it's not. It's in the Bible. Huh? You're giving up the ghost. You're giving up the ghost. It's pulling it from you at that point. Okay, what was verse? Was that 29? 29. So let's jump back to Sirach. I mean, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 7. Verse, I'm going to read it myself, 22, I'm going to get through it. Uh, for wisdom, which is the work of all things, taught me. For in her is understanding, spirit, holy, only one, manifold, it's subtle, prudent. That's another word for it. Lively, clear, easy to understand, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the thing that is good. What's good? The law is good. Quick means alive, which cannot be leaded, ready to do work. What does the word leaded mean? Young man with, with the locks. 
means hindered. Cannot be hindered. When you have the Holy Spirit, you cannot be hindered. No, if the Spirit of God is on you, nobody could get in your ear and move you away from the commandments of God. There's no conversation. Somebody can come to you and trick you into doing something against the Word of God. If the Holy Spirit, when people get led away by this, if somebody whispers in your ear and leads you away from that, that means the Holy Spirit ain't on you, bro. That means something's wrong with you. Yo, let me tell you, let's all leave and um, we could start our old school. And you go, you know, oh, wow, that's a great idea. You're a dummy. Oh, gosh, you're a dummy. Ah, somebody just suck at you. Watch this. Go to, um, being that I said that, go to Sirach. 34, I want verse, do I want to do that right now? Yeah, let's go to it. Let me just do it right now. Sirach 34. Remind me to come right back here, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm serious. Yes, sir. Uh, verse 1. The book of Sirach, chapter 34 and verse 1. Watch. The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false. If you're void of understanding, you're void of what? Wisdom, which is the what? Okay, so you're void of the Holy Spirit. What does it say now? The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false, and dreams lift up fools. The dreams, it's not talking about sleepy time dreams. The dreams is the hopes that you have. If you're void of understanding, if you don't have the Holy Spirit on you, whatever hopes you have or desires, it's a waste of time. It's not going to work. You get some people out there that, you know what? I hit it. I hit the lotto. I got money. But they don't have no wisdom. And they fall into all hurtful lust. Burn their money through. So your hopes are vain if it's not coupled with the Holy Spirit. So read, it, read out. Finish it. Verse 2. Whoso regardeth dreams is like him that catcheth at a shadow and followeth after the wind. Now it says... Whoso regardeth dreams or your hopes is what? Is like one that catcheth a shadow. Can you catch a shadow? So if you have these dreams and these desires and they don't come to fruition, it's why? Huh? Because you don't have the Holy Spirit upon you. It's like you catching a shadow. Read on. Verse 3. The vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another. Now look what it says. The what? The, the vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another. Read on. Even as the likeness of a face to a face. So now I'm going to explain the second part to explain the first. Even like a face to a face. Where do you see face to face? Where do you see that at? When you look at what? In a mirror, right? In the mirror, when you look in the mirror, you see your face. Is that really you? Right? Can you really grab that? You can't hold it? So read, the, read above in the verse. The, the vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another. So when you have a hope or a dream of something you want, which one of you ever dream of something you want? You're like, you know what? I can't wait. I've been dreaming. I want poverty. I just want to be broke and I just want to get sick. I don't want nothing good. Nobody has that. Everybody has good dreams, right? I want to do well. I want these things. I want whatever it might be. It's a dream, bro, because without wisdom, it ain't going to work the way you think it's going to work. And when it doesn't work like that, what happens to you? Without wisdom, what happens to you? Give me that hope deferred. Where's that at? Proverbs, Proverbs what? Watch what it says, because it says it's going to make you, I think it says it's going to make you sick. If I, I hope I'm quoting it right. Where's it at? Is it 15? 13, 20. It says hope deferred? Yeah. Yeah. Does it say sick? Yeah, that's it. The book yeah. of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 12. Watch this. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. You know, a hope deferred, a dream deferred for a man without wisdom, it'll make you sad. It'll make your heart sick. Now you're frustrated because things are not working out for you the way it's supposed to, the way you want to work out. James uh, uh, 4, maketh the mind sick. You got all these dreams and things never work out for you. Now you're bitter because you're, you're not working with wisdom. James 4, you ask the misc, 2 or whatever it is. Yes, sir, verse 3. The book of James chapter 4 and verse 3. 
You ask and receive not. You ask and you receive not. Because you ask amiss. Because you ask amiss. That you may consume it upon your lust. That you might consume it upon your lust. You're asking for the wrong thing. Brothers, praying for a wife. I want a wife so bad. And you're there praying. I want a life. I want a wife. Lord, Lord, bless me with a good woman. I don't know where she's at. Meanwhile, you don't got no place to put it in. You can barely hold on a job regularly. You ask, don't ask for, ask for a job. Ask the Lord to give you a spirit that you can keep a job. Asking for the wrong thing. You're putting the wagon for the horse. So read it again. Verse 3. Oh, stop. Wait. Sisters, you want a man. Oh, you want a man. But you don't want to listen to no man. <coughs> well, you'll be asking for a man for you. You want a man, you don't want to listen. No, you just, let me stop. Keep my mouth shut. You know how my mouth is. Let's read on. Verse 3. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. That's because you're going to consume it upon your lust. It ain't pure. It ain't from God. Read on. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Read on. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Okay, go to verse 2. Verse 2. Ye lust and have not. Oh, that's what I wanted. Verse 2. Read on. Ye kill and desire to have. You lust and have not. You desire to have. You have dreams to have. You have hopes to have. And you have not. Read on. And cannot obtain. And you can't obtain it. Read on. Ye fight in war. Yet ye have not because ye ask not. He says you fight in war. Where do you think you fight in war at? In your mind. You fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Because you don't ask for the right things. You know why? Because wisdom ain't moving you, bro, bro. That's why you're asking for the wrong things. And then things don't work out for you. And then you what? Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Let's go back to Sirach 34. Verse 3. The book of Sirach chapter 34 and verse 3. The vision of, of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another. Right. That's when you're dreaming. You have these dreams. It's a resemblance of what you want to see happen. Read on. Even as the likeness of a face to a face. Like it's like a mirror. You see it. You can see your things pass. You can see. I can see myself in that Bug, what's it called? Bugatti. What's it called? Oh, yeah, Bugatti. I can see myself. In, you see it. Like I, I can see it. No, bro. That's not going to happen like that. Because you ask a miss. Read on. Of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? What if it's an unclean thing? How is it going to be cleansed? If it's bitter, if you got a bitter fountain, how are you going to get sweet out of it? If you void of understanding, how is anything good going to come out of that? All your dreams are deferred. Read on. And from that thing which is false, what truth can come? Zero. Read on. Divinations and soothsaying. So I, the reason I'm going to this right now is this point right now. Divination and soothsaying, read on. And dreams are vain. And dreams are vain. Div what is divination and soothsaying? One word. Witchcraft. witchcraft. Okay, so now what is the purpose of witchcraft? When somebody is trying to work witchcraft, what is their purpose? I know you guys think like Harry Potter, you turn, put the, the bunny in the hat, and it disappears. No. Real witchcraft. Trying to uh, persuade you. Uh, to move you. To move you, yes, Right, sir. to persuade. Witchcraft is the controlling of a person's mind. You can will the person in the direction you want to go. Here's one. Yo, Deacon. <laughs> I'm so petty. I'm, t I'm so petty, gosh. He's going to be mad at me after I say it. Yo, Deacon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, they're about to set up the prayers and we're going to break bread. Yeah. You want to go to the strip club after this? <laughs> 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 and here he go. Don't say yes. Please don't say yes. But you understand? That happened here. That's what I'm saying. This is, this is OKC stuff. For you all to know, there's in the Sabbath service, brothers in the Sabbath service, they're about to break bread. Brother's like, yo, I got some singles. You want to go to the strip club after this? And brother's like, yeah, word. I'm like, damn, Jesus Christ. 
how did you ask that question and how did you know he was going to say, yeah? God damn it, man, you niggas is wicked as hell. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not saying people, but I'm just throwing, it just, that thing. Damn it. Be strong in the Lord. Let's get out of here. Let's roll out. <laughs> Stuff you be here sometime, man. Ah, man. So the point I was making Soothsaying and divination, the divinations and soothsaying are what? Are vain. Are vain. It's going to come to naught. How could, how could somebody, soothsaying is to say something that soothes you, that scratches your itch, and it got you because they know where you're weak at. And you thought it could only happen to who? A man void of understanding. It's not, don't got the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, we read, cannot be led in. It cannot be hindered. They will convince you. Don't let it be you. Don't let it be me. Don't let it you be you, lay sisters. Be smart. Nope. Mm -mm. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. And when, I'm, when I feel I'm weak and I'm not, I'm around people filled with it so they can check real quick. Yeah, what's wrong with you? Nope. You know, yesterday, last time I was by Deacon, I've been his truth almost three decades. And I sat down there, and I had a zero carb slice of pizza. <laughs> so here we go. The sun is down. I'm sitting by the fire. And I took my plate, and I set it right next to the fire. Deacon looked at me. I said, you know, the sun is down. I said, oh, shoot. I'm like, you know, that thing bothered me when I said, that thing bothered me. Because I'm like, damn, I'm the devil. I put it there to warm it. I knew it, I knew it was Friday. I knew what it was, the Sabbath was on. That's what we're sitting there for. That old man and me made me put that thing right next to it. Digger looked at me like, no, the sun, I'm like, oh, snap. I'm glad around men like that to check real quick. A post somebody sitting around me don't say nothing because you don't got the Holy Spirit on you. And I, I, evidently I'd have it on me right then. Somebody said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You understand, the founder of Sabbath is death from God. And then a few minutes later, brothers having a conversation, and they're talking about work. I'm like, no. Let that go. Nobody wants to hear about that now. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. That's why you surround yourself with people of understanding to keep you in check. Because it's easy. I was on a cruise. I was singing Christmas carols. I ain't joking. And I caught myself. I said, God damn it. And after I said that, I said, you even about to sing a Christmas carol? And a few minutes later, I was humming it again. I said, oh, shit. I did about three years. What you going to say, D? I caught, check, check. I caught Omar Salahab actually dancing to a Christmas song. Lord Jesus. I had to bring, you know, reel him back. What, was he twerking? No, he was doing a, he was doing that Carlton dance. <laughs> and it wasn't even like it wasn't like the, it wasn't like like it was the Temptations. It was some white Christmas song. It was that whack stuff. You know, damn it, damn the devil, damn it. I tell you, mess with your head. Anyway, I'm sorry. Let me go back. Uh, I'm gonna get. To, I'm, I'm dragging this out. Okay, uh, verse divinations, verse five. Verse five. Divinations and soothsayings and dreams are vain, and the heart fancieth as a woman's heart in travail. Right. Not, not rational. Read on. If they be not sent from the most high now, in thy... Now, now watch this. If they be not... What's the if? They. Dreams. If they be not sent from who? The most high. If they be not sent from the most high... In thy visitation... Set not thy heart upon them. Now it says, if they're not sent from the Most High, in thy visitation, set not a heart upon them. If they be, how would you know if they're not sent from the Most High? Based on that verse right there. Not the brother's last line, somebody else. Somebody? Oh, pick somebody. Same too. Hey, you know, the rest of you brothers are more than welcome to join in. There's not a wrong, well, there is a wrong answer, but it's good to just exercise yourself like this. So we all had to learn sometimes, so ask, answer the questions. 
You know it's not sin from the Lord because it don't line up with what the Lord say. Okay, blah, blah, blah. you're right. But how would you know that? By study, praying, what, and what, what in that verse tells you that? In that verse? Let's see, uh, I ain't got the answer. Please. No, what verse we reading? What verse we reading? Verse 5. Okay, watch this. That's verse 5? Verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6. No, no, don't read it. What in verse 6 will let you know what you said is right? Oh, if they be not sent from the Most High. Okay. No. In one thy, one, ver, one word. Visitation. Visitation. In thy visitation. How do you visit God? The scriptures. Where's he found at? Right, you better be in the Bible. That's why man is void of understanding because he ain't in the Bible studying or applying it so then now somebody's scratching your itch and you're falling for it. You don't got the Holy Spirit upon you. You want it. You got to go get it. You got to open the book. He already told you who you are. How much more you want? So read the verse again. Verse 6. If they be not sent from the Most High in thy visitation. It said, if they're not sent by the Most High in thy visitation with God. Read on. Set not thy heart upon them. So here you go. You know one way if you had any scriptures. Real quick. Give me uh, Sirach 51.23. The book of Sirach, chapter 51 and verse 23. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned, and dwell in the house of learning. God said, draw near unto me, you unlearned, and what? And dwell in the house of learning. And you better dwell in the house of learning, dwell in this Bible, dwell in this congregation, dwell amongst brothers where there's learning at. The worst, the worst place you can ever be around is be in a room with people dumber than you. <laughs> nobody, everybody clueless. Nobody got no wisdom. Nobody can instruct you or give you anything. If you're the smartest man in the room, you're, the wrong, you're in the wrong room. Better get around people that can help you increase. So read again. Verse 23. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned, and dwell in the house of learning. Matthew 11:29. The book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse 29. Read. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn. Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. That's how you know it's from the most high. You got to visit God. Open these scriptures and he's going to direct your path. Uh, Revelations 3 and 20. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. He said, if you open that door, if you allow me, he said, I'm going to knock. You know what that knock is for us? He woke us up. That was a knock. He woke us up. Prior to this, I was an African-American. For whatever reason, it wasn't because of no righteousness. God decided to tell me who I was and showed me. That's that knock. Now he's like, I knock, now you open. Sup with me. Visit me. And I'm going to increase you. I'm going to put my spirit upon you, that Holy Ghost upon you. And I'm going to feed you. So read that again. Sup with me and what? Sup with me. Sup. <coughs> and we'll sup with him and he with me. Right. Sirach 15. Oh, no, uh, Jeremiah 3, the better, uh, the uh, feed you with understanding. Jeremiah 3, I think it's 15. What does 13 say? Jeremiah 3, 13. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 13. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. Only acknowledge, that's it. And only acknowledge thine iniquity. That thou hast transgressed. Grace against the Lord thy God. The only way to acknowledge your iniquity is you better open this Bible and learn. Learn of him. Read on. And has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. Read. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. Recover yourself. Read on. That's repent. Read on. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city, 
and two of her family. Not many of you are going to make it. Read on. And will bring you to Zion. Read on. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. And I'm going to give you pastors according to mine heart. Teachers according to my heart, read on. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what you get right now. Knowledge and understanding, how to navigate. You wasn't getting the Christian church. They're going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. They're going to open the book and explain to you what the will of God is. What is the Holy Ghost? What is the Holy Spirit? How to get it and how not to lose it. Everybody in the Bible that was talked about highly, they had it on them. I want that. There's nobody, there's no way you read in the Bible people that was, that was pleasing God and didn't have the Holy Spirit upon them, inspired of God to do mighty things. Moses, Holy Spirit upon him, stand before Pharaoh and tell him his firstborn is going to die. The Holy Spirit put a boldness, we're going to read that too later on. I'm, the Holy Spirit put a spirit of boldness on you also. Uh, uh, Sirach 15. See the reader? Reader, don't listen. I told him to take me back. Where's the Solomon 7? Remember I told him to take me back? Yeah. He didn't listen to me. Thank you, reader. Uh, Sirach 15 and 3. It's too late now. The book of Sirach chapter 15 and verse 3. With the bread of understanding shall, shall she feed him mm. and give him the water of wisdom to drink. Right. She will feed him with the bread of understanding. And give you the water of wisdom to drink. That's what Christ said in John 4, I believe, when he says, you never thirst again. All right, so let's go back to um, Sirach, uh, we, let's go, Sirach 34. Let me finish this off real quick. The book of Sirach, chapter 34 and verse 6. six. If they be not sent from the Most High in thy visitation, set not thy heart upon them. For dreams have deceived many. For dreams have deceived many. That's why the Most High told us not to trust in our hearts. How many of you been listening? How many of you heard my classes over the years? What's one thing I always say? Say I don't. I'm tell you, I don't. I, Y'all be think I be. I don't listen to myself because I can convince myself anything I want. No, if it ain't if it ain't written here, no. I don't listen to myself. If, it, if what I say don't line up with the scriptures, nope. Nope. Because any given time, you can convince yourself of something that's not in the scriptures. Most of the time, that's what will happen to you. You have to check it with the Bible. Because dreams have deceived many people. People void of understanding will fall for it. So read again. Verse 7. For dreams have deceived many. And they have failed that put their trust in them. And they have failed that put their trust. And when they fail, a hope deferred maketh a person sick. Watch this. So if your hope is vain, if your hope is money, and you don't have the right spirit, and God withholds it from you, then you become bitter. Then you could become a thief. Sell drugs. Defraud your brother. Because you ask and you ask amiss. If the Holy Spirit is in you, you know. The Lord is going to give you what you need. And you're going to learn to be content. I'm changing the whole class right now. You learn to be content. That's why a lot of people fall. Godliness with contentment is great gain. It doesn't mean that you don't want better for yourself. But at what cost? What you want to do, what you, what you want to give up for money? The Sabbath, you want to give up time. I mean, meaning if you can't pay your bills, you can't pay. I understand that. But you're telling me you just want more so you can, so you can go buy AirPod Maxes or whatever you are. That's what you're going to lose time on the fellowship or whatever it might be. All money ain't good money. Sometimes God hold back things from you to save you from you. How do I know that? Because he did to me. Read verse 9. Verse 9. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things. Ask me. Read on. And he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. And when you hear that, I, trust me, I, I've been there and I've done it. 
I'm telling you, it ain't worth it. Now, in your mind, you might think it is because you're void of understanding. But then you get around men. That's why I said be with men smarter than you. Stop sitting in them small circles of people that can't help you. Get around brothers who, got, who has more understanding than, than you. Get around leadership as much as you can. Even if you can sit there and be around them. You're not around them, you're going to hit a ceiling. Y'all understand that? You want to get better at something, you, get, you have to get around people that can help you increase in whatever you want to learn or increase in. So a man will travel what? Knoweth many things. And he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. He will declare wisdom. Read on. He that hath no experience knoweth little. But he that hath traveled is full of prudence. Here, if you have no experience, you knoweth little. I don't care how good you sound. I'm going to tell you, brothers, in his truth, in his truth, five years. One, I'll put one to, I don't say, I hate to put it, I'm going to put a number, but I don't mean this number. Under 10 years, and you ain't been through nothing, you don't know nothing. As much as you might think you know something, no. No, you don't. And there's no shame in it. When you, when, when you go into God and you visit these scriptures and you study and you get yourself around men well-traveled, okay, you're going you're gonna to get yourself someplace. But the Bible says, he that hath no experience knoweth little. So I don't care how, I don't care how old you can be 59 years old, you don't know nothing concerning God. You have no experience in this. And that's what the Bible says. So you can sound like you know what you're talking about, and the best advice I can give you is don't say nothing because you think you know what you're talking about. You don't. You don't. Because the Bible says if you have little experience or no experience, you know very little. Read on. But he that hath traveled is full of prudence. Read on. Verse 11. When I traveled, I saw many things, and I understood more than I can express. And in my life, I've seen many things, and I know more than I can express. Sometimes when I'm telling you something, it's because I've seen it happen, or either I did it or I saw it happen, and I can't give you every single detail of it. Just listen, bro. I'm just trying to help you. Save you from you. Just listen. How do you know what I'm saying is right? If I'm not telling you to break God's commandments, it would be in your best interest. People sometimes don't want that. They won't be around people that's going to scratch. They want soothsayers and people to alter their mind because they don't want to change. Read on. Verse 12. I was oft times in danger of death, yet I was delivered because of these things. The spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live, mm -hmm. for their hope is in him that saveth them. Read. Whoso feareth the Lord shall not fear nor be afraid. Read. For he is his hope. Blessed is the soul of him that feareth the Lord. To whom doth he look? And who is his strength? The Lord is his strength. That's why he's visiting him. Read on. Verse 16. For the eyes of the Lord are upon them that love him. He is their mighty protection and strong stay. Mm -hmm. A defense from heat and a cover from the sun at noon. A preservation from stumbling and in help from falling. Mm -hmm. He raises up the soul and lighteth the eyes. He giveth health, life, and blessing. If you with God. You understand that, right? Okay, I want to be, so if you understand, if you're with God, all this is what you're going to get. Health, life, and blessing. He's going to preserve you. He's going to take care of you, right? You lean on the men of understanding, men traveled. You understand that your hopes are vain and is worthless if you're void of understanding. Now watch this. Verse 18. Verse 18. He that sacrifices of a thing wrongfully gotten, his offering is ridiculous. And, it, and the gifts of unjust men are not accepted. Read. The Most High is not pleased with the offerings of the wicked. Neither is he pacified for sin by the multitude of sacrifices. Read. Whoso bringeth an offering of the goods of the poor, doeth as one that killeth the son before his father's eyes. Mm -hmm. The bread of the needy is their life. He that defraudeth him thereof is a man of blood. Verse 22. He that taketh away his neighbor's living slayeth him and he that defraudeth the labor of his hire is a bloodshedder so I have a question from what we was reading about concerning a man void of understanding without the Holy Spirit all his hopes are deferred and now it went to about dealing evil stealing 
from your brother, whatever, you know, defrauding your brother. How does it correlate? Nah, he gave it to somebody else. Hey, good, good. Good. Us. He's void of understanding. He didn't try to get all those things the wrong way, so now this. Uh, no. This, we got it. He's, try, he's void of understanding, so now he's doing all these, these things the wrong way to get what he thought was his dreams. There you go. Because his hopes were deferred and make his heart sick, now you're going to defrauding your brother. You're dealing evil. You're void of understanding. But you think you got the spirit with you. No. You didn't listen. You didn't want counsel. You didn't want the Holy Spirit to guide you. And now you're bitter. Now you're dealing with evil. And it's not just stealing. You could be murmuring, whatever it might be. Now you're out to destroy. Read. Verse 23. When one buildeth and another pulleth down, what profit have they then but labor? When one prayeth and another curseth, whose voice will the Lord hear? Mm -hmm. He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? So what it's saying, whatever you're doing, you're negating it. It's of no value. If you're built and pulled down, no value. If you touch something that's defiled, you wash your hand, touch it, you're back to the same thing. No value. Read on. Verse 26. So is it with a man that fasteth for his sins and goeth again and doeth the same? Who will hear his prayer? Now I got a question. Who would go fast for his sins and do the same thing again? Go ahead, right there. Good boy. A man void of wisdom. There you go, a man void of wisdom. A man who don't got the Holy Spirit, he would go do the same. Only a dummy would do that. You keep on doing the same thing, what's the point in doing it? That's lack. Wisdom is a pure influence to do good. That's what wisdom is. It's going to be a pure influence. So if you're not doing good, you don't have that pure influence on you, and this class is for you, or for me, or for any one of us, to do good. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be messed up to go through all this and don't get it because you just don't want to change. When God was saying, sup with me, I'll give you. Change. Do right. Go back. Let's drop that so you all understand the chapter. Good, good. Let's go back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 7.25. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 25. For she is the breath of the power of God. She is the breath of the power of God. Give me a second. Let me get that with you. She is the breath of the power of God. Go to, uh, go to Genesis chapter 2. 7. The book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life. When it says, so that's that life force. The, the breath of life is the commandments now inside you because you could be alive and be spiritually dead. He breathed into the breath of life. Job 37 and 10. The book of Job, chapter 37 and verse 10. By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of the waters is straightened. Wait a second. By the breath of God, what? Frost is given. God is saying by his breath, his word. It's a pure influence. So when the breath of God was breathed into us, it was to influence us to do right, to do good. And man sought out to do evil. We sought it out to do evil. He said, I gave you a pure influence. And you're like, no. God said, y'all, I got to kill y'all. I got to bring death in this earth because y'all don't. I mean, I don't know. In my mind, I'm thinking we must have been evil as hell because we was on top. We had everything. And we decided to sin. So the nature of man is to do evil, but we have to overcome it. 
We can't allow it to control us. So read it one more time for me. Verse 10. By the breath of God, frost is given, mm -hmm. and the breath of the waters is straightened. Mm -hmm. Also by watering, he, weary, he wearieth the thick cloud. Don't worry about that. Give me Job. Job 20 and 20. The book of Job chapter 20 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. 20. Job 20 and 20. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He shall not save of that which he desires. Start from the top again. Verse 20. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. He will not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. We don't. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about, when he, when he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. And shall rain it upon him while he is eating. That's not what I'm looking for. Give me a second. What do you talk? Somebody talk for a second. I forgot. I'll find right now. Give me one second. Somebody speak. Say something. Right, give me a second. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Shalom, y'all. Y'all good? All praises. Dad, dad. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. It's John. I'm saying Job. John. John 20 and 20. Probably they put you on the spot. What am I supposed to say? 20 and 20. The book of John chapter 20 and verse 20. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Okay, I'm sorry. I did want that one too, Deacon. Repeat that. Let's read that again for me. We'll come back to it. Read it. Verse 20. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Watch. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. As my Father hath sent me, even so sin are you. Watch. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He said, and receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed on it. He gave all of us. Now read on. What does it say next? Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And, whoso, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Do you understand the power he gave the disciples? On earth, he said, whoever sins you remit. When he gave him the Holy Ghost, he gave him power, power to make choices. But here's the point. Their choices would not be against the scripture because they have the Holy Ghost. They, they visit God. But the point I'm saying to you, when he gave them that influence of the Holy Ghost, they did mighty works. And we're going to get into that real quick, the mighty works that you'll do on them. I always love that scripture right there because he said, read that verse again, verse 23. Verse 23. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. And whoever sins you retain are retained. You think that power's not here on earth right now? We act like these men were like some, I don't know what you think. They were regular people, what we call regular. We're not regular, but you know what I mean? Human beings on earth that God put this power upon them. Christ gave them a power to remit sins. And whoever say you, who you say ain't right, they ain't right. Because what they're going to be doing is coming by the word of God. Which one you got, D? That was Job uh, 27 and 3. The book of Job, chapter 27 and verse 3. All the while my breath is in me. All the spirit of God is in my nostrils. And the spirit of God is in my nostrils. That's that breath that Bishop was talking about. Mm -hmm. All the way back to Genesis 2 and 7. Mm, I like that one. That's good. Um, he breathed on him the Holy Ghost. Let's go to John 14. We didn't go there yet. John 14. 
John 14. Start with verse 16. The book of John chapter 14 and verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Read. Even the spirit of truth. Even what? Even the spirit of truth. Read. Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. And that's what the, the, the Lord, listen to what he said to them. He said, and I pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, be, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So what is the comforter when you read on down? Somebody just say it. No. Yes, yes, but yeah, what's the word I want? You, you, Christ is the answer, but that's not what I'm looking for. What's the word? The, okay, read verse 26. Verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So when he said, over, uh, when he said in verse uh, 17, for he, shall, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you, is that Holy Ghost, that Spirit is good. So you all have a dispensation of that. If you're following Christ and keeping the commandments, it's on you. Now we just have to make it increase in us and grow. So jump back up. Uh, do I want to read all that? No, one second. Give me a second. Uh, verse 18. Verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So when you said Christ, yes. Yes. So the Holy Ghost, the Word, the Spirit, it's all the same thing. Lo, I come in the volume of the book is written of me. So if you have the Holy Spirit on you, that means Christ is in you. And if Christ is supping with you, he's directing your paths. So if you're in the wrong path, that's not Christ. Read verse 26 until verse 27. 26. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Mm -hmm. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. What verse was that? Verse 27. 14, 27? John 14, verse 27. Yes, read, sir. I'll read it from the top again. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now watch what he says. He said, I'm going to give you my Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you the Spirit upon you. Then he come back and says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be, let it be afraid. Why is he saying that for? Who can help me out? Can this my try? Shalom, Bishop. He's saying that because he knew he was going to depart. And when he uh, left them, that they was going to be afraid. Afraid? What do you mean they're going to be afraid? Explain well, to me what you mean they're going to be afraid. They're meaning like their hearts was going to be troubled. Like for an example, when Peter didn't want uh, Christ to die, and you know his, his heart was troubled when Christ told him he was going to die. Okay, let's see if that's it. Let's read on. Verse 28. Verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Read. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Read on. Verse 31. But that the word may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Okay, let's go back up. Peace, verse 27. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, 
give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He, uh, Romans 15. Uh, 13. The book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So it means that peace I leave with you, right? Now look what he comes back and says now. It says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope that you might grow in in faith, a hope, we don't. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. So what is supposed to happen with you with the Holy Ghost? It's supposed to grow in you. Your faith is supposed to grow. That's why I said we get a dispensation of it, but what we do with it is up to us. Are we going to grow, abound? So now as you abound with this Holy Ghost, why does he say be not afraid? Uh, young man, either one, I don't care. Somebody decide some question. Pat, who, whoever you decide to. Either one. Because it's supposed to be strength. It's supposed to build your faith up where you're not afraid. You'll be able to conquer certain things when you Like build, what? Uh, like fear. A fear of what? Like if you're scared to go out and teach. Oh, there you go. Because when that Holy Spirit come upon you, it's going to give you a spirit of utterance. And you have to go out there in these streets. We're going to touch about that in a second. You have to go in these streets and teach this word. He said, I'm not going to be with you. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave. But I gave you, I mean, he said, this word will comfort you. Don't worry. Don't worry about them killing you. Doesn't matter. If the Holy Spirit is on you. You have a, you have a pure influence. You understand. Uh, understand that this ain't where it ends at. So don't ask for the Holy Spirit and don't think you're going to go do the work. That's how it works. He said, I'll give it to you, but as you get it, I'm going to demand more from you as I increase you in understanding about, go back to that in Romans. Let's finish that real quick. What was Ro that 15 and what, 13? 15, 13. The book of Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Read. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Brothers, who can admonish one of you? Filled with the Holy Spirit, that you can admonish one another. Read on. Verse 15. Neverthe nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God. So now he said, I'm writing to you more boldly now. Read on. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Right, so he's, so look what he says. That I should be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Now, the Holy Spirit on him, it's time to do the work now. He's a minister to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So our job is to go out there, what? Spread this gospel to help spread this Holy Ghost throughout the earth, that there'll be prophets raising up everywhere. He's not given to you for you to hold on to it. Now watch, read. Verse 17, I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. Read on. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ have not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. To make the Gentiles obedient. Here's an example of him trying to make the Gentiles obedient. He went into the, what was the city he went to again with Diana of, of Ephesians, Ephesus, right? To make them obedient. What they do? They ran him up out of there. They tried to kill him. The Holy Spirit was on him. He spoke bold to bring them in obedience. That's what the Holy Ghost is going to do. It's going to give you understanding that's going to make you bold. Read on. By, verse, by word and deed, verse 19. Read. 
through thy mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, uh, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Do you understand what Paul's saying? Paul said he went back into Jerusalem and preached the gospel of Christ. That would be the one last place I think you would want to go back to if you ain't filled with the Holy Spirit, because they wanted to kill him there. After leaving for so long, he came back into the city of Jerusalem and preached the gospel of Christ. At one time, he didn't believe, but when that Holy Spirit jumped on him, he went throughout the earth. And his office was to the Gentiles, not to those out there. Read. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Verse 20. Yea, so have I stir, strive to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. And he went to cities where nobody was there before. Here's one we got right now. As a matter of fact, a deacon, they went to India. Nobody preached the gospel there. You know what you're stepping into when you go out there? No, you don't know. It got to be the Spirit of God with you to go into a whole place, a whole other land where you don't speak the language, you don't know the laws, and tell the people that you're the children of Israel and these other people are heathens and they're going to die and they're not going to get the kingdom. You think that's not God on you? You should know them by their fruits. Going into other lands, that's the spirit of the Holy Spirit moving you. And you see us, we've been doing that throughout the earth. Going to different cities. We've been to cities before when they was telling us, oh, you can't go there. Well, that's, nah, that you say that, that's exactly where we're going to go now. We're not, don't tell us we're not going to go. Now we're going to go there. We've been to some places before. I said before, when we went to some places, I'm like, oh, if this thing pop up, we don't get out of here. We're not going to get out there. The God had to be with us in there because I'm like, there ain't no way we're going to get up out of here. There's too many of them here. I'm not talking about like 20 people. I'm talking about like thousands of people where there's no, there's only one way out and there's a few thousand people between us and that way out. All right, let's open the Bible. Let's get to work. God's will is going to be done. It ain't, it ain't because of us being some tough guy or brave. It's God's spirit. You want that to increase in the earth. Okay, watch this. Uh, what did we leave off at? Verse 21. I don't know if I want to read all of this. How much time I have? I got a little time. Go read on. Verse 21. But as it is written, to whom... I'll uh, jump on down to verse 24. Verse 24. Whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you. If first I be somewhat filled with your company, Read. but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. So he went from, from Spain back to Jerusalem. Read on. For Verse 26, for it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. So he was in those cities also at one time. Read on. It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. Right, so if they were able to partake of the Holy Spirit, then you understand, remember this, it says the wisdom of the Holy Spirit will give you the spirit of understanding. You will understand that you have to look out for your brothers. That's just understanding the Bible. You can't see a brother in need and tell him be warmed and filled. The Holy Spirit ain't on you then. To understand it is a gift from God that you know, now I'm not talking about brother jerky, I ain't talking about that. But understand that you have needs to help someone your peoples, and you don't sacrifice to help them. If you don't understand it, then I'm like, okay, then you haven't grown in that area yet in the spirit. And if you are selfish and you're self-serving about yourself, how's that going to work when judgment comes on this earth and we're supposed to gather ourselves together? All those that have wrought judgment, that means you have to understand the scriptures. You understand that? Okay, read. Verse 28. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. I'm going to come in the fullness of the Holy Spirit upon me when I, receive, when I come to you. Read on. Verse 30. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Read on. That I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea. He's saying, listen, I'm asking you to pray for me because I'm about to go to Jude I'm about to go to Judea. And these niggas over here want to kill me. But the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is leading me there to do the work. Even though I know this ain't the place to go, but I'm still going. How do you do that unless the Holy Spirit is moving you? Read on. And that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. Because you understand, it was his service to go there. That was his job to go there to minister to the saints. Read on. That I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. Mm -hmm. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. That I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may, we, and may with you be refreshed. Okay. He said that I may come. He said, pray for me that I can come unto you by the will of God, that the Holy Spirit will lead me back to you. Now we're going to stand about the Holy Spirit moving you. That pray for me that I have the Spirit, that I can go into Jerusalem, minister to people, and that by the will of God, which is Holy Spirit, it can one day lead me back to you. you can, the Lord will make things line up and put him in a position to say, it's time for me to go back to Rome to go do this work. The Holy Spirit moving you. First, let's deal with the, but, the, uh, the boldness. Uh, Acts 4. Acts 4.31. The book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. So you already know if you move with the Spirit of God, if you speak this, this word with boldness, if you're timid, Holy Spirit ain't on you, or your faith is weak. All right, that's, you know, that's another thing I watch for is like, I, I watch brothers, I'm like, ah, he always looking to get around. Nah, he ain't the one. I pay attention to camp, and I'm looking, okay. You know what people shy away from stuff like that? In camp, shy away from those, those things. Especially brothers, I'm talking about brothers in this truth. Well, that's what, what I'll be talking about. Is when they ain't right with God. Because they know, man, the Lord may kill me out here. I always watch that. I see, why is the brother so withdrawn? Like he's, hmm. Always got excuses. Every week? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, mm, mm, mm. I like to see when camps turn up a little bit. How people react. You get scared. You start looking away. You, you know, yeah, let me, you, anybody want some, some water? <laughs> That's what I pay attention to. He spake the word with boldness. Uh, what was that an act for? Uh, of uh, 431. Give me uh, two. Two and four. He spake the word with boldness. Watch this. Two and four. The book of Acts chapter two and verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the, so the Holy Ghost will make you speak with boldness. It will give you utterance. The word utterance is to speak. You're not going to hold back this word. When wisdom is in you, you're not going to shut your mouth up. When the Holy Ghost is upon you, you're going to speak up. You're not going to have respect to person. Well, I'm not going to say that because he's the bishop. Or No, the Bible says what it says. Who do you serve, God or man? So never be timid. It don't matter what rank you in here. Now I'm not saying be disrespectful because the Holy Spirit is not on you if you're disrespectful. But if you see sin and you let me sin and you ain't sinning about it, you know, the Holy Spirit ain't on you. Then you, you ain't moving with God. You ain't serving him. They speak the word with boldness. Not in regard to people's feelings. We ain't the feelings. Go to church for the feelings. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Do you men understand that? I wouldn't want to be around people that's not like that. You have no good to me. If you turn your eye to sin, act like you don't see it. Spirit ain't on you. Uh, Sirach 11, 15. The book of Sirach chapter 11 and verse 15. Let me get there with you real quick. Something here I want to see. 11, 15. 11.15, 11.15. 
Uh, yeah, go ahead, read it. Verse 15. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Love and the way of good works are from him. Watch this. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law is of the Lord. Read the next part. Love and the way of good works are from him. Love, we know is the commandments. And what? The way of good works and, are... And the way of good works are what? Are from him. Are from him. So, wisdom, knowledge, understanding of the law. Are of the Lord. How do you get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Somebody just come on. Somebody just hand the mic to somebody. By studying the scriptures. Studying the scriptures. That's right. Visit him. Study to show thyself approved. What does it say? That, how does it say again in James? Um, it, um, liberally. Just quote it for me. James one. It says liberally. Can somebody quote it? Thank you. If any man act wisdom, every man lack wisdom, I can't remember, but I knew where it's at. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He give it to any man liberally. So wisdom, knowledge, what says again? Wisdom what? Knowledge and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Read on. Love and the way of good works are from him. And love and the way of good works are from him. First Timothy 3. Verse 1. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 1. Verse 1. This is, a, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. So, wait a second. We just read over here. Don't stay where you at. We just read over here. It says... Wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Love and the way of good works are from him. So the good work I'm talking about is what? Read again. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. So how do you, des how do you, come, how do you come to the point of design the of office of a bishop? Based on what we're talking about, it's no trick question. Do you want me to just tell you? <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will give you that utterance, will give you that spirit to desire, I want to lead, I want to teach. That's, that's a gift from God. That's the Holy Ghost on you, to desire something. When you desire something, you think you, think you just have a bright idea in your mind? I told something God, I told my, something stupid. That's God putting that spirit upon you. That's why it says undeniable when brothers want to get raised up in rank, you don't, you don't got to say nothing about it. It'll be evident who you are. And if you are a man and you ain't raised up, it don't matter because you got the Holy Spirit on you. What's going to come out your mouth, well, that's why I said you could, be, you could have the rank of a soldier but got the mind of a bishop. And when you open your mouth, it's going to be undeniable God is with you. You can listen to that conversation like, what's his rank? I've seen it before we asked. That he's only officer 10? Damn. Why he ain't raised up for? What happened? What happened in that moment when we said that? God put on us, the Holy Spirit put on us, examine this man. Why is he not up then? We wasn't thinking about him before. All of a sudden, like, he said one thing. He's like, hmm, okay. At that moment, God decided, you know what? I'm going to influence his thoughts right now. I'm going to make him desire the office of a bishop. And now he's going to work at that. And he's going to understand it. I'm going to influence him. And it might be 20 years from now, you reach that goal, but you'll be patient. It won't be you saying that, you know, I just want to be it because I want to be it. A man's going is of the Lord. Who can know it? That's that Holy Spirit put upon you. Everybody understand that? 
Good. First uh, Peter's one. So remember, I pulled that because you desire good work. We read that in Sirach 11. First Peter's one. I want one through five. The book of First Peter, chapter one and verse one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace <coughs> be multiplied. Look what Peter's writing to this church, uh, to these churches in Asia Minor. He said, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So these people didn't know just what they was going to be part of. But God put that Holy Spirit upon them and they became his elect. Like God had put the Spirit on you and you become a bishop or a deacon or a captain because you desired it. And all of a sudden now, you're moving in that direction. Your conversation's like that. You realize to get wisdom, I got to be around wisdom. I'm going to spend my time around men more alert. It's going to be that pure influence on you to move you in that direction. Read on. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and, defi un and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Read on. Who are kept by the power of God. Who are what? Who are kept by the power of God. Who are kept by the power of God. What is the power of God? The Holy Ghost will keep you from stumbling, which are kept from the power of God. Read on. Through faith unto salvation. Through faith unto salvation. Your faith is proven by your works. What you do. You will be kept by the power of God. Read on. Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Ready to be revealed in the last time. So, he was talking to them there. And that's prophetic also that those spirits will be back on the earth and the Holy Spirit will be upon them in the last days. Once again, filled with the Holy Spirit teaching the word around the world to raise all the rest of the people that need to repent. No spirits will be here again on the earth. Second Ezra 14. Second Ezra 14. Give me a second. Oh, my knee is killing me. 14 verse. Stay with me. 14 verse, oh, 1422. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 22. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me. He said, if I found grace before thee, Father, please send the Holy Ghost into me. And I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning. He said, listen, Father, put your Holy Ghost upon me that I can write everything that has ever been done from the beginning. Read on. Which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and that they which will live in the latter days may live. Ooh. Ooh. The Holy Spirit moved them to record all these things for us in the latter days that we can read them. So, if, let's go back up from the top, verse 22. Verse 22. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, and I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and that they which, shall, which will live in the latter days may live. Wait a second. So if he was filled with the Holy Ghost so he can do this, what do you think he was writing? It wasn't the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost, so we can open this book in the last days and find the keys on how we have tapped into that Holy Ghost, that we can live. 
It was left as instruction for us so we could find these words. Now, if you're without understanding now, then it just ain't for you. If you cannot connect these dots, the gospel's hit to them that are lost. There's nothing that we could do about it because the word of God cannot influence you. The power of God can't influence you then. Everybody see that? Sure. All right. First Peter, let's go back to First Peter 5. The book of First Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. No, uh, five. Oh. that's the last verse we read was 5. We didn't move nothing further than 5. Kept by the power. Yes. Oh, yeah, go ahead. That was it. Okay. Verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Read. When ye greatly rejoice, though wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, mm -hmm. if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. What are, uh, where are we at? Verse 6? Verse 6. Okay, that you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Read on. Verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, mm -hmm. though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the Lord wants to see, remember, we read about the Holy Spirit was manifold. Remember we read that earlier? Now it's saying that to trial of your faith that you inherit this through manifold temptations. So as you grow in understanding in the Holy Spirit, the Lord is going to also allow more temptation to come upon you to see, is the, work, is the word of God running free course through you that is controlling how you behave, how you think, how you respond? How would you know if the Holy Spirit is upon you if it's ain't tested? It has to be tested to see if it's really working inside of you. So it's through heaviness, manifold temptations. Read on. Verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of, our, of Jesus Christ. So you want that Holy Ghost? Then you better ready for all that's going to come along with it now because the Lord's going to see if you're real. And as you grow in understanding, the tests get harder. As you begin to go out and teach around the world, the trials are going to get worse. He wants to prove and see that is the power of God working in you. And the power of God is stronger than anything. But how are you going to know? you got to go through it. Read on. Verse 8. Whom having not seen, ye love. And whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing... Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Mm -hmm. Re receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's the whole point. Read on. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Read. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ. So it's a searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Now watch. 12. Verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things. Wait a second. So there was a time when it was revealed unto Paul, when he understood, unto Peter, unto James, unto me, unto you, to all of us. And once it was that, unto whom it was revealed, not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister. So when our Holy Ghost come on you, what you're supposed to do? Go out and teach. Speak with boldness. Teach the word of God without fear, without respect of person. And now you're proving that the Holy Spirit is upon you. Give me that Sirach 33, 17. The book of Sirach chapter 33 and verse 17. Consider that I labored not for myself only 
But for all them that seek learning. Now all those, I'm not doing for myself only, but I'm sharing this gift with everybody else so they could be filled with the Holy Spirit. A nation of men and women filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Unstoppable. Go back. Let's finish this off. Verse 12 one more time. Verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things mm -hmm. which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost. With what? With the Holy Ghost we don't. sent down from heaven. Which things the angels desire to look into. Sent down from heaven the Holy Ghost. Now here's the point. Verse 13. Verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. So prepare yourself. If you got this Holy Ghost on you, you better gird up the loins of your mind. Because there's going to be manifold temptations that's there to pull it away from you. Read on. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the, rev at the revelation. Lation of Jesus Christ. So he's telling you better gird up your minds. Here you go. The visitation you're supposed to have with God, you better lean into him. Lean into your scriptures. Don't, don't be doing this on your own with your own mind. You'll be that man without understanding, making all the wrong decisions. Prepare yourself for it. Okay, so I'm pressed for time, so I'm going to try to go through this real quick. We're going to see how the Holy Ghost worked concerning the birth, the birth of Jesus Christ. All right. Let's go to Matthew's 1. Uh, press for time. Luke 1. Let's do, it, let's do it faster. Let's do it the other way. I'm not going to drag it out. The book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 60. Four. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue was loose, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Stop. So, I want to start there, but we'll use that. Who can explain what's happening? Go ahead, somebody just answer, pass it. Zacharias, is, uh, his dumb spirit has left him, and he's now able to talk. Right, he's able to speak. Okay, stay right there. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy, Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation from us in the house of his servant David. What is he talking about? Uh, the birth of Christ. Okay. Who was born at this time? John the Baptist. Right. His son John was being born. That's why I said I would have started there, but we'll work with it. When he was able to speak again, the Holy Spirit moved him to speak about the prophecy of, this, of the Son of God being born to come and visit and redeem his people. He was moved by the Holy Ghost to say those words. So now we're going to go back up in the, in the history a little bit. Go back to Luke 1. Um, Luke 1, verse... Um, Start with verse 24. The book of Luke chapter let, 1 let, and I, verse 24. Okay, let me go a little higher. Uh, see, I'm, I'm a, I have to drag it out to make it clear. Okay, start with verse 7, 
<laughs> it's like I got to read the whole chapter, man. Uh, okay, read verse 5. The book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. And his wife, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth. And they were, with, and they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they were both, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Verse 13. Verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Jump, for, on, ju uh, jump on down to verse, verse 19. Verse 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel. The, that stand in the presence of God and them sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. So the Lord, the angel uh, stopped his tongue that he couldn't speak. Because the angel was explaining to him that the son that was going to be born was going to prepare the way for the Lord. Read verse um, 17. Verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Right. To, go ahead, read on. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So he understood that the birth of his son was going to begin or the readying of the coming of the Messiah. The angel showed him this. He doubted it and the lady said, okay, because of that, I'm going to make your tongue dung. All right? Jump on down to verse 24. Verse 24. And after those days, his wife's wife, Elizabeth, conceived and hid herself five months, saying, thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me. To take away my reproach among men. Her reproach was she was barren. Read on. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Read. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou, art, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Read. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. So the angel came to Gabriel. I mean, angel, the angel came to Zacharias and told him, Your wife's going to give birth, and this son is going to prepare the way for the Messiah. Then the angel came to Mary and told her, You're going to give birth to the Lord. And explain to her. And now she say, how can this be? I know not a man. But she was espoused. She was promised to somebody already. But she has not had sex yet. Luke 20, uh, Judges 21. 21 and 12. To explain that. The book of Judges chapter 21. And verse 12, and they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead 400 young virgins, 
that had not known men by lying with any male. That have known, read again. That had known no man by lying with any male. They have not known man by lying with any male. So when she said over there, um, how should this be, seeing I know not a man, I have not had sex yet. So how is this going to happen? Read on. Uh, Luke, Luke 135. Verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. He told her, the angel told her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest or the power of God shall overshadow thee. It says, therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So she's saying, how's it going to be? I don't know no man. He said, don't worry. Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Now, what's something that I said earlier the Holy Ghost is? It is a what? Just say it. It is an influence. A pure influence. So let's read on and see what that influence is. Read. Verse 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. Remember I said earlier before we read about the Holy Ghost that God said he will make meat for those animals in their time. He will place that fish in front of Leviathan at the time so he can eat. So now, here's the influence of God. He told her, you're going to have a child. She said, I haven't, I'm, she, I'm a spouse, but I haven't had sex yet. He said, don't worry. The Holy Ghost is going to, is going to influence you. And what happened? Verse 20, 36. Verse 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Here, here comes the influence. He said, Mary, oh, I forgot to tell you, your cousin Elizabeth is with child, and she's six months pregnant. Read. Verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Would you believe it? With God is nothing impossible. Read on. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Read on. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. Now all of a sudden, she with haste went into a hill country, into Judah. To do what? To help her older cousin Elizabeth with the child. For uh, 1 Peter 121. This is what the Holy Ghost does. 121. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21. Who by him do believe in God? Oh, 2 Peter 1, 21. Sorry. The book of 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21. Read. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. As the Holy Ghost moved them to speak, the Holy Ghost will move you to go in a direction. A, man, a man's going is of the Lord. So all of a sudden, he told her, you're going you know, to say, you're going to have a baby. She said, I don't know no man. Don't worry, the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow thee. Oh, I meant to tell you, Elizabeth is pregnant. You know what? I got an idea. Dad, Elizabeth needs help. She's older in age. I'm going to go there to help her. Read. Verse 39. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. That's that spirit overshadowing her. Read on. And, into, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. So wait a second. She entered into the house of Zacharias, which is her, which her family, the older man, he was a priest, and Elizabeth. What did the angel tell Zacharias? Just talk. Come on, let's go. We got to speed up time. Huh? Uh, 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 right here, Noah. Right. It, he, he told, well, he didn't tell her who it was. He just said, the son you're going to birth, that's your wife's going to give birth, is going to make way to the Messiah. She gets to the house now. She salutes her cousin Elizabeth. Read. Verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. 
And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. As soon as she greeted Elizabeth, Shalom, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and the babe leapt in her womb. So now Elizabeth got the Holy Ghost on her now. What is the Holy Ghost just going to tell her? Read on. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, so Remember, the Holy Ghost will give you utterance. Read. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Ooh. He told, the, 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 Elizabeth told Mary, Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. She didn't have no baby yet. Read on. Verse 43. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? She said, now watch this, that the mother of my Lord, which is Christ, should come to me. Isn't this confirming what her husband saw? You think, you think, you think Zacharias didn't have the conversation with his wife? That the angel came to me and told me that our son is going to make the way for the Messiah to come. As soon as she walks in the house, the Holy Spirit jumps on her, and now she begins to utter and say, Wow, blessed are you, or blessed are me, that the, Lord, that the mother of my Lord will enter into my house. It's confirmation. Read on. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Read on. And blessed is she that believed. Read on. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. She said, and blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told from her of the Lord. So what is the performance of what thing is going to happen? I say it louder? Yeah, come on. Sex. The performance of it is going to happen. You're going, this is going to happen. This is of the Holy Ghost. The performance of it is going to happen. Read. Verse 46. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. So that just confirms what Mary saw because the angel told her. Her older cousin, Elizabeth, said it. And she said, would you know? Zacharias was visited and he told him that our child is going to make a way for the Messiah. This is the Holy Ghost moving. Read. My soul doth magnify the Lord, mm -hmm. and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Read on. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. Read on. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. Read on. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Read. He hath, he hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. What? So listen. Listen how Mary is speaking. The Spirit of God is on her. She understands that, listen, I'm blessed because I'm ushering in the Messiah that's going to turn the world upside, uh, right side up. That's what she's speaking about. She understands that this is no ordinary child. This is the Messiah that was spoken about that was recorded to come. The records that bore of him, we read about in the Old Testament, she knows that those scriptures are now coming to pass. There's one that beareth in heaven. I, didn't, I should have went back to John, 1 John 5. I forgot. We get a chance. Whatever verse I stopped on, read the next verse. Because it says on earth too. I didn't get to that point yet. I don't got time for it. Okay. Damn, I should have read that. Uh, verse 56. Verse 56. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. She returned to her own house after three months. Returned to her house how? Matthew's one. The book of Matthew chapter one and verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, 
she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take to thee unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. So when did the angel come to Joseph? When? After they had sex. So now help me piece it together. When did the angel come to Mary? So the Holy Spirit was on her before that. And it moved her to go find her husband, which was in the city. And he slept with her. Before they had a marriage papers. So now I'm not telling you all to do that, because you ain't none of you sisters are gonna bring forth the Messiah. Don't, so don't let nobody talk into that. Don't be stupid. Yeah, no, no, he told he told me I'm gonna bring forth G. Yeah, okay. Come on now, dog. Yeah. Shh. Come shh, on, shh. man. Girl, don't worry. Shh, shh, shh. But the spirit came on her to fulfill the performance of it. And she found him and enticed him. And he dealt with her. And then he felt guilty. He was a just man. He didn't want to put away privily. Remember, three months she went back home to her father. But then she had to come back. And the angel told her what? Told, Jake, uh, told Joseph what? Don't worry, take your wife. Because what's in her was ordained to happen. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Ghost moving the spirits of people. Well, uh, I'll stop there. I hope you all received something from today's class. Tune in. Bishop Nathaniel's up. Next, sit down, sit down. Up and sit down. Tune in. Bishop Nathaniel. Down, down, down. Tune in. Bishop Nathaniel's up next. IUIC on the rise. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.